would mess up the shiny route this time around because it wasn't a problem last time right, let's just start over I'm not going to explain the self-explanatory stuff but I will go over the important shit I guess this tutorial is operating on the assumption that you guys have played this game before. You understand like what shiny objects do, what socks do. Yeah, this is gonna go on YouTube. Yeah, to disable the hand, you wanna just stand right here, past the red line. When the prompt comes up, press A and just do the same thing again pretty easy, but you have to make sure you do it, otherwise you're not going to be able to complete the run. Just do that again, get dragged into the taxi pad. Pretty easy. Uh. Yeah, just pay attention to the stuff that I do. I'm going to minimize the tricks you have to learn in this tutorial so you can get your first run done faster and then you can add the strats as you need them. Alright, here I'm going to explain jump height. So if you hold down A, Spongebob will get a higher jump than if you just tap like this. You can see the difference here when I do a tap jump and he kind of grabs ledge here. But if I hold down A, then he can jump over the ledge without grabbing it. And the same goes for your second jump too. See that? You can also walk off ledges like this and keep your jump while you're walking up the ledge because it takes a while for his position to update. See how I'm jumping in midair? Kind of like this. You want to use that concept for a lot of the tricks in this game for jump spacing. So for this trick, you just want to face the sock, walk off the ledge slightly, double jump spin, make sure you hold down a twice so you get your maximum height for jumping across this gap when you get to here just face down double jump spin land over the spatula and once you die you're just gonna pause and go to the cow bungee spatula over here by the way if you have a gamecube or playstation 2 i recommend you don't put your memory card into the console for running this game because the saves are very slow on those consoles you're gonna lose a lot of time to that Same concept here with jump height. Do a double jump spin. Make sure you get max height for both of them. See how it, see what happens if you don't hold down A. See? You're not going to get enough height. See how this rock kind of peaks up here? Like right around here. You want to walk along this line. Double jump spin. You should get it. You should get it with practice. If you're having trouble, then just keep trying it. Practice maximizing your jumps. You're going to need to know how to do that going forward. Grab this uh, sock and just drown yourself in the fountain. You should appear back here. Take note of how many spatulas and socks you have. So after this split, we should have three spatulas and three socks. According to the splits down here, right there, yeah. Three and three means that three means three socks and th excuse me, three spatulas and three socks. The split below that, you'll see. Um, all right, I'll just do this first. Once you get the text box from Mermaid Man, just warp back to Bikini Bottom. On oh, top of I am quick. The split. So here. The six and five means you need to finish the split with six spatulas and five socks. Alright, so here we're gonna get the sock inside of Squid's house and the spatula. So, to do this, we're gonna get ten jumps to get the, the sock. Excuse me, we're gonna do ten socks 
10 jumps to get the spatula and we're gonna destroy everything in his house to activate the sock so we have to count out our jumps we're gonna do one jump here do a spin here another jump into here we can do another one here that'll be three jump here it's four jump here it's five six seven eight nine we'll jump into this and that should activate the sock and now on our 10th jump, we're gonna jump into the sock okay, okay. and the text box should pull us into the spatula. Then you're just gonna warp back to on top of the pineapple. All right, this is a pretty simple trick as long as you know how to maximize your jumps. Jump to his nose here and jump on top, grab the ledge, very easy. For the Easter Island head jump. Now I can wear four pairs of underwear. <laughs> yeah. So this jump's also pretty easy. You get on top of here, get the golden underwear, jump to this balloon, and jump to here. This batch was inside of the little top of the pineapple. Alright, now we're just gonna go to Bikini Bottom, downtown Bikini Bottom. In this segment is very important to focus on your combos. If you take a look at the bottom of the screen when I hit these guys. Am I gonna combo off of this? I'm not sure. No, I, I can't get a combo off of that. But pay attention here to the bottom of the screen. Here you wanna get a super ultra mega monster combo by hitting these quickly. Just met See the bottom of the screen, Super Ultra Mega Monster Combo. There you want to get a Mega Monster Combo. And here you just gotta hit this thing. Push hit the button. Well push, push, and make sure that after you do this, you pause the game. Once, you, once that cutscene ends, pause the game, go to Tiki's Go Boom, and warp here. And then we're going to want to do the same thing again. But in the middle, we're going to actually get the spatula on top of this statue. Practice going quickly there so you get your combo. It's important to get the combo so you get max shiny objects from your tiki hits. So we're going to do the same thing here. Make sure you get your max combo. Your mega monster combo there. And then from here, you're just gonna go over, get this again. But now we're gonna go to these wheels over in the front. Same concept here, just make sure you maximize your jumps. You should get this. From here, you're just gonna jump to the side, push into the building when you land there. And you should get over. For this jump, you're just gonna make sure this guy goes close to the lamp, get hit so he taunts you and jump on top of him while he's taunting. But again, this jump is very similar. You just gotta maximize your, your jumps and your spins to get across. Make sure you touch that tiki so it activates the, uh, the chain behind you. You get a bunch of shiny objects from it. Now you should have enough to get into the sea needle from here. Don't worry too much about the strats I'm doing here. Oh, I'm quick! I'm just gonna try to breeze through it so you guys can understand what's going on for the next part of the route. Don't worry too much about how I'm hitting these things. All you have to know for this level when you're a beginner is just don't die. Make sure you hit every tiki here and don't die doing it. Avoid the thunder tiki's. Hitting them, avoid hitting them straight on because if you hit them straight on, then you just lose health and you don't want to die here. If you die or fall, that's the worst thing that can happen here. You can hit the side of them like that. Yeah, make sure you remember the wheel here, by the way. Make sure you remember this wheel in the north wing. Now, from here. 
stand here, wait for the guy to throw his missile, and then you can continue on. But yeah, make sure you wait, because if you don't wait, there's a chance you'll get hit. And when you're a beginner, it's not really best to risk getting hit. Yeah, see, for here, you're just gonna kind of just not die. Just don't worry, don't worry too much about how fast this is. Just don't let yourself die here. Trust me, it's it's worth just ignoring the strats here when you first start. When you hear that little fanfare sound, it means you got all the tiki's. You can just leave. Alright, so now we have seven and five. Good to go. Switch to Sandy and leave. Oh, I'm quick! Again here, you have to know to maximize your jumps. Sandy has the same properties where you, if you tap, she doesn't go very high, but if you hold down, she goes higher. So what you're looking for here is, um, if you look in the upper left corner of the screen, you'll see a little Texas swinger, the little round ball. You're aiming for that. So you're gonna wanna double jump, glide straight to this ball, and just kind of mash your lasso button to grab it. That jump takes some time to learn. No, it's not version exclusive. You can do it on any console you run this game on. It's just kind of hard for some people to get used to it at first. Jump on the tip of the cannon here and then just kind of glide across the spatula over here. Yeah, we're doing a new one because I had some ideas to make the game easier to learn for people. Oh, I'm quick! Oh, excuse me, I didn't, I didn't mean to split there. I'm just used to splitting there in my own runs, <laughs> sorry. Alright, again, don't worry about the strats here, just get the objectives that I collect. It'll be pretty easy to follow in that case. Okay, so here's a strat that you actually have to understand. I'm gonna go over this again. If you go too high, you get walled off here. You hit an invisible wall and just get sent straight down. See that? That might happen to you a couple of times. What you wanna do is just follow my jumping pattern. Try to stay very low to go under the invisible wall here. So the pattern here is jump on the trampoline, ju double jump, spin, jump. You should get it. And then you're just going to switch to Sandy here. Also, no, don't switch characters while standing on top of this thing. Because there's a chance you'll soft lock if you do that. So, you don't want to soft lock. Just stand on the ground here, the red ground, to switch bust up characters. And from here, you're just going to glide straight to this Texas Swinger over here. And don't worry too much about the strats here. Just collect the things that I collect. As in, don't worry about the speed of what you're doing. Another one. This gap might be hard to clear for some people. I recommend getting this checkpoint over here. Once you do that. This gap might be hard to cross for some people as well. If you're having difficulty, just jump to this building first. So from here, from there to here, and then across to here. You can just do it that way if you want. If you have trouble with that jump there, you can just jump up here and glide across. I don't know why you would have trouble with that though, it's pretty easy. So now to do this trick, you just wanna jump on top of this little pole, double jump to this thing, grab the ledge. pretty easy. You want to land on top of that platform so you don't have to get a ledge grab and so you can glide across, but if you happen to miss the platform, it's not a problem. You can just kind of glide across here and grab the ledge. Oh, 
Also, um, this swinger over here will not appear unless you get the spatula behind the invisible wall earlier. Uh, I don't know why that is, but I've, I've found that that's kind of what happens. The reason why I switched to Spongebob first here is because it's close- it's faster to go from the bus stop to the spatula to the button rather than to the spatula to the bus stop to the button. And plus, if you're facing this way, you'll turn around when he grabs the spatula. Instead of having to switch to the bus stop, instead of having to like, do this first and then turning around to go to the bus stop. So just get to the bus stop first, trust me it's faster. And you'll just get your little button activation here. And we should have 10 and 7 going into here. Yes, oh, yes we I'm okay, quick. good. Alright, lighthouse fight. This is something you're going to want to practice a lot, trust me. Because a lot of people neglect to practice this and then they just get screwed later on because they lose a lot of time here. To do this, you're just going to jump on top of this wheel. This might take some time to get down. Jump on top of the wheel. Grab this. And then you're going to want to do a, a Y press or whatever it is on your console. Do a bubble bash. And just jump straight across to get the, the uh, sock. The reason why you're doing this bash here is to turn yourself in the right direction. See how when I press this button, I can turn, I can change the way I'm facing. So when you climb up here, you'll face the wall, do a bash, turn yourself around, and then do a double jump spin. You should get the sock. Another way you can do this is by doing this, grabbing this ledge up here. And just jumping straight across. That's another easy way of doing it. Just pay attention to the order of duplicatotrons I hit and which ways I go to hit them. You might want to rewatch this level a couple of times to make sure you had the right um, spots. Make sure you hit the duplicatotron on this side first. That's important because if you hit the other one first, then the robots are going to spawn strangely. To get the spatula, just kind of step into here. You'll kind of clip through. If you can't get that one, that's okay. You can just always destroy this robot, and you'll see how the electric gate goes down here. It'll go down there as well, and you can just walk across the back way, grab the wheel, and then come back and grab the spatula. But if you're capable of doing that clip, then good for you. You can just grab the spatula and head back to um, end of the road. You should have 12 spatulas and 8 socks leaving here. Yes, we do. Grab the spatula and we're gonna go back to the top. Grab here. Oh, I'm quick! Uh, they're all around the same, striker. Okay, so. Grab the sock here. This is probably the first relatively difficult strat to learn and get down. That'll take you some time to figure out in this game. I will mention that it is a lot easier to do this strat on the GameCube and PS2 versions of the game. However, if you're on the PAL version, that version runs in 50 FPS, so it behaves differently. So it's a lot harder, and people say it's like nearly impossible to get that trick on the PAL version. So there will be another... I might make a tutorial when I get my PAL Xbox to do a tutorial for the European players who do the alternative to this trick. But if you're on the NTSC version, you're fine, so don't worry about it. Yeah, you're just going to want to come up here. There is a risky strat here, but it only saves one second, and then you can lose your run to it, so don't worry about it. Alright, uh, if you're on Xbox, you can talk to Larry here. If you're not on Xbox, just walk past this, and don't talk to Larry. Because Xbox, the loading routes are different. All right, so here we're gonna set up Sponge Glide, and this is a pretty uh, tough trick to get at first for some people. Others get it pretty easily though. Just make sure you're setting it up correctly. As you can see, uh, there's a little bit of a crease in SpongeBob's foot where his heel goes to the front of his foot. There's a little bit of an indent. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of lining up his foot, the little indent with this this um this red line, the outside border of it. You kind of see where it is there. And when I do that, I'm going to turn this to 
if you can see the bus stop out in the distance, how there's a little circle, and there are two little bright blue lights on the side, on the side of the circle, you want to line this up so this pole is covering the circle, and there's a little bright blue light on the side, like that. Now, to set this up, once you have this, you're ready to do the glide. Make sure that you jump first before um, before turning, because if you turn, it'll look like this, and you'll end up over here, or if you turn first and do this, you'll get like this weird thing where you like do this. You gotta make sure that you set it up so your heel is kind of crossed with that line, and then do this. So this is what I would screenshot. Just kind of screenshot this maybe so you can see where to stand. This image right here is where you want to be. And you just want to, again, jump before you turn. So you go like this, double jump spin. When you reach your max height, you just want to slam. And you should get stuck on the tower. And if you did it properly, you will land and you should be able to get up here. I have a bunch of individualized tutorials for this trick, so if you're having trouble with it, just go to my tutorial playlist and see if there are any other ways I explain it that are better for you. This one's very easy though. All you have to do is just stand by this red line, double jump, and just slam here. You should get it. Very easy. When we hit the loading zone over here, we're just gonna split. Oh, I'm quick! And now we're just gonna go through the pier. This is all one split. So this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. Oh, just didn't do my double jump for some reason. Didn't miss the double jump again. That's cool. I'm pretty sure I don't have enough. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab this for the sake of showing you guys how to grind for shiny objects on this slide. When you come up here, make sure you get this checkpoint activated, otherwise you'll spawn all the way back there. So you want to get this checkpoint, jump onto the slide. Alright, and if you lose too much health from bumper boats, you shouldn't get these. But I get these just from extra shiny objects, so get those. And get these. If you do a double jump to here, you should be able to get the spatula off the slide. I've seen people have trouble with that jump, so if you have trouble with it, just practice it and you'll get it eventually. It's pretty easy. You're just going to want to drown yourself here. Drown yourself, and if you got the checkpoint, you should appear up here. Now we're just going to climb the tower here. This strat might take you some time to get down. It is pretty difficult for beginners sometimes. But we're going to climb the flags now. Make sure you're jumping between where these flags meet, like these little indents over here. You want to jump on those. So when you come up here, um, if you get the prompt to play, the, if you get the prompt to pay the clam, make sure you hit B on this because if you pay the clam, you're gonna lose a lot of shiny objects and that's gonna cost you a lot of time. So make sure you're jumping in between these. When you get on top of this green flag, jump straight across here. Grab this tube or just jump up like this. You can just grab it like this too. It's fine. Oh. I keep jumping over it, but yeah, you might get a ledge grab like this. All right, so from here, you see this little um, this little line that's going straight up that I'm kind of jumping over right now? You want to kind of stand right here. And you see this platform that's above me here? See it um, right in the middle of the screen? The little pedal, stick, the little wooden pedal sticking out? We're trying to grab that. So to do this, we need to just jump across and set up the camera so it's easy for us. So we're going to stand right here. Make sure that this little pedal up here is parallel to your screen. We're going to do the same thing we did in the lighthouse. Press the, um, the Y button or the triangle button or whatever it is for you. Turn around this way. And from here, this is kind of what you want to see when you're going for this jump. Make sure you hold down your A button to get your max jump height. Again, remember what we talked about earlier? If you tap, you're not going to get your max jump height. You have to practice getting your max height. And if you do this, 
correctly. We should get it. There you go. It's a pretty tight job. See like that. If you have trouble with this jump, I might offer you a different option later. After this tutorial, I could probably go over another way of, like, another spatula you can get instead of this one. If you have a lot of trouble with this, but... It's pretty much how it's done. You wanna... Do the bash, turn yourself around. Just try it a bunch, you'll eventually get it. Give it, like, an hour of your time, and you'll probably get it at least once. But yeah, the, the key here is that when you do your second jump... Make sure you turn around as quickly as possible. Like that. If you kind of round off your jump, like that, you're not gonna get enough height. And you might miss the ledge. I have individualized tutorials for this one too, by the way, so you can just look in the playlist for that as well. Once you get the spatula, pause the game as soon as you get it and go straight to slip and slide under the pier. Which jump were you having trouble with? There is a version difference on this. If you're on the GameCube version, you're going to have to wait for that little spin bot to move away from the tent. But if you're on Xbox, you can just do this. Go straight to this, um, this guy, throw it. What I just showed? Yeah, it takes some time. I'll show an alternative to it in this run. Like, after it's over. I'll, I'll tell you guys which spatulas you can do instead of that one. Alright, you're gonna switch to Spongebob here by the way. Just to make this easier for you. It only wastes like... Like four seconds, not even. It wastes like a few seconds to do this, but it's worth it. Because you're probably not going to miss it if you do it this way. Spongebob is a lot floatier than Patrick, so it makes it a lot easier. Make sure you get the sock up here. Hit this so you get all the shiny objects from it. Because sometimes what will happen is like if you let it just thunder itself out... It'll blow up right before you leave the level and you won't get enough. So now you're just going to fall on top of this thing. And from here you can just drop, do a spin, and you'll land on top of this and get this. Um, if you happen to miss this jump, like say you land here, you can just drown yourself in here. And you'll appear back up on the castle and you can try it again. But this time you can go around this way if you miss it. that pretty easy but yeah once you get this sock you're done here so we're gonna warp we're gonna scroll all the way down to patrick and we're gonna split should have 17 and 12 yes, oh we i'm okay. quick here we go now we're just gonna go straight to poseidon now don't worry about the strats i do in here the key to this level is just not getting hit when you're a beginner don't worry about anything but just not getting hit and if you want an individualized tutorial on this level, it's in my playlist. But a really easy thing you can do here is just approach her in the center of the stage and she'll jump early. For now, that's the only thing I'd really worry about as far as advanced strats in this level. It's not really important. Trust me, like... I know when I say things, like, I don't want to give you guys too many things to handle and, and learn when you first play this game. I believe that if you pick up the easiest strats that are the fastest for what you learn, like, for the amount of time you have to put in to learn them, how quickly you can get into the game if you just do these strats that I'm showing you, trust me, you'll have a much easier time learning the game, and then you can just add harder strats as you get better at the game. You're not stuck with this route. Trust me, you're not. The best thing you can do when you're learning a speed run is to not bite off more than you can chew. So just 
take my advice and do the stuff I'm showing you here, you'll get into the game a lot faster. Especially because the majority of your time is going to be spent practicing cruise boosting and sponge gliding, probably. You want to put most of your focus on that stuff. You don't want to get distracted by other crap. If you know how to fight this boss, you can just skip to the end of this level. You're not missing anything. I'm not going to go over anything until this level's over, so feel free to skip. You're not going to miss anything. Again, th these levels, the Tree Dome and Krusty Krab are very simple, unless you're doing advanced strats. So just pay attention to what I do, and you should be fine. Just destroy everything in this level. Don't worry about how fast you're doing it. The only key thing here is to bowl duplicate a Tron at the start of the level like I did. If you do that, everything else should be pretty easy. Bikini bottom. Okay, I can teach you SpongeBob storage now. Hit this button, and on the way, the, on the, while the bowling ball is going toward the button, you can just turn around and head in this direction. Bowl this thing back there if you want. Might save you some shiny objects. All right, there we go. That was dumb. All right, so for SpongeBob storage, double jump into this SpongeBob. And you'll see that as he has the little, um, for double jumps, he does the little balancing animation like this. When he lands, like he catches his feet again, catches his balance. During this animation, he can't transform. So what you can do is you can jump around. As long as you jump before you move, you can just kind of store the sponge ball and release it anywhere you want. Like that. So we're going to use this to skip the chum bucket. We're gonna skip uh, the industrial park. I mean, we're gonna go straight to the chum bucket. So you can jump, double jump over this. As soon as you catch yourself, you can just start jumping. Make sure you jump before you move, otherwise you'll lose it. As soon as you start walking, you'll get it back again. When you get up here, make sure you're pulling back into this pipe. You want to kind of be like right here. Just pull back into it. And you see the little, um, the little, rock that's kind of poke it out in the back you have like four hills in the background right now four distinct hills the one the, the little tiny one all the way on the right by the kelp forest just face toward that push forward into it you should bounce off of this uh, in that case i landed on this thing but I'll, I'll show it to you again yeah i'll show you all in one motion Oops. Yeah, this trick is really easy though. You'll get it down pretty simply. 
The hardest part people have is, is up here, is landing up here. A lot of times they'll push forward and they'll, they'll forget that they have to still not walk on those, on those things when you get up there. Remember, you cannot walk at all until you get into that pipe. Let's push forward. And to do this, you just want to press B and jump twice. Jump twice. So you press B to get out of the sponge ball and immediately jump twice. So you can watch that again. Once you bounce off and you're close to chum bucket, it's B A A. Those are my inputs. If you want to get this underwear, you can. The golden underwear here gives you an extra health to work with. You, you can get it if you want, but if not, you can just go straight to the inside of the chum bucket here. Yeah, you can do a wall jump here to get up to this thing. But if you don't want to do a wall jump, you can just kind of like jump on the side here and press the Y or X or triangle button to get the spatula. Once you get that, you're just going to want to pause, go to the chum bucket again, the third spatula in the bikini bottom menu. When you talk to Mr. Krabs, press B, pause, and go to infestation in the at the Krusty Krab. Now just, all you got to do here, make sure you hit the chuck first. Stand on top of this Thunder Tiki and run away from it so it, it rises up and hits the guy over there. Spool across that so you hit the Thunder Tiki and the Duplicatatron. And now you're just going to go on the ground floor and finish him off. Once you get this message, you've destroyed all the robots in the Krusty Krab or whatever. Just pause and warp to on top of the pineapple or really anywhere in the overworld. But you should just, well, anywhere as in like anywhere within the, the pineapple world. So like top of the pineapple, Shady Shoals, Chum Bucket, and then, um, yeah, just like any of these three really. Just warp to any of them and then split. Oh, I'm you quick. should have uh, 12 spatulas. Phew. Okay, that's actually a mistake because you get the spatula here. You, at this point, you should have 21 spatulas and 12 socks. <clears throat> this should be your 20 second spatula for the Krusty Krab. I just accidentally counted that one. So I'll fix that before I upload these splits. All right, this is a very easy level for beginner strats. Just find a way to climb these blocks. Walk across here. And again, max height. You gotta make sure you get your max height jump into the spatula. And now um, you can just reload the level to make sure the cycles are on track. If you don't want to reload the level, that's fine. Oh, I'm quick. But yeah, you're gonna want to split as soon as as soon as you reload the level here. I'll just show you again. When you get the spatula over there, just split oh, when you reload I'm the level. Because the blocks are going to be all in weird spots. But if you don't want to reload the level, especially if you're on PS2 and GameCube and you want to save that load, you can just climb up again. It's fine. Not a big deal. Now you're just going to go to Sandy's Dream. Oh, um, by the way, if, you, if you're if you having trouble getting that spatula over there, you can just do the casual method and hit that. It only, only loses like a second or so. When you're coming up, just hit that. You can follow the bouncing ball down, jump on the bouncing ball to grab the spatula, give yourself some more height. But yeah, anyway, in this split, we're just going to go straight to here. Just going to go straight to Sandy's Dream. Alright, this level is pretty easy. All I have to do is just jump across here. Make sure that you disabled the hand, by the way. If you don't know what that means, go to the beginning of this video and, and watch the taxi pad trick out of leaving the pineapple. But you need to have that done to make this work. Get stuck on the this top part, like on the underside of the acorn. Now what you're gonna do is just kind of mash into the acorn in this purple area for a bit. When you see your head stuck in there, that probably means you got it. 
what you're attempting to do here is get a checkpoint and then die in this manure truck. And if you did it correctly, then you should respawn on top of the acorn. And there we are. If you fail it, you just have to do it again. You'll, you'll spawn over by Larry, and then you just gotta go across and try again. But yeah, we should have 24 and 12 here. Looks good. Now we're gonna warp to Mr. Krabs. Oh, I'm quick! Now just make sure you bowl this little stack of Tiki's in the back to keep your shiny object count up. This sock is, is obtained through hitting this fountain here. It's not from hitting this, this stack of Tiki's over there. So make sure you're hitting the fountain. If you're having trouble with that, some people do. Alright, so in this level, we're actually just going to get this TV sock. It's kind of stupid, but in my opinion, it's better to do this than the sock in the computer room because that one's only five seconds faster. And five seconds really doesn't matter much if you're new. But yeah, we should have enough now. You can do a little bit of a damage boost off of here. <laughs> Again, my advice... Oh yeah, I'll just go over this first. Again, make sure you get your max height jump to grab this. I'll continue saying max height jump until it's drilled into your head that you have to make sure that you're jumping. You're holding down your A button to get these jumps. If you don't, you'll end up with like this, and then you just miss it. If you miss it, that's fine. You can just kind of climb this area. Jump on top of this rock and do it again. Just grab here. Again, you need to get your highest jump to get this grab. You can come from the opposite direction. But yeah, it's best just to practice these things, make sure. Make sure you're good at jump spacing. Oh, I'm quick. Excuse me, didn't mean to split there. Yeah, make sure your jump spacing goods. Your jump spacing is good. Otherwise, oh, yeah. you're gonna have a lot of problems in this game. Pretty much what it comes down to. Yeah. So here, talk to Mermaid Man just in case you die or fall. I got. It loses a half a second to talk to him instead of going straight to the melon, but trust me, if you're new, you want to, if you die here, you're going to be able to warp back to the funnel machines. And if you don't get the check, if you don't get the Mermaid Man text box here, then you have to respawn all the way over there by going to the computer area. So just trust me, grab the text box. Don't worry about it. Walk to the edge here. Excuse me, that was really bad. I'm just gonna restart this. Again, see how I made a mistake? You can just reload over here. You don't wanna do that if you talk to Mermaid Man. Just kind of follow what I do. This is very self-explanatory. Jump to the edge of this platform to make the tiles go away. This might be hard for some people to walk across, so I'd say just throw to the middle platform, pick it up again. If you're having trouble jumping across there, you can just kind of go around this way. And you'll, you'll figure it out. This is pretty casual stuff over here. Make sure you stand like right around here. This little pipe thing. And you should be able to get it. If you, if you stand too close, you're not going to hit it. Yeah, it's a pretty self-explanatory level. It's very yeah. easy. So you can just slam on this button here to start it off and then all you got to do here is just go around in a circle hitting every button if you mess it up you can hit that little um yellow button over there to reset the towers
Yeah, it's because I waited. The, the melon ran out. We can just hit this one on the way back. This next trick gives some people some trouble, but it's not really that bad. Just requires some practice. It's one of the easier tricks in the run once you get used to it, trust me. But make sure you hit this button here. You're going to start this off by walking into the corner and getting stuck. Kind of like this. Pay attention to the little blue light in front of me. It's um, like right in front of Patrick there. You're going to aim for that. And if you, do, if you time correctly, you should be able to land on the side of the slide, pull to the right, and enter the loading zone. I'm not very good at explaining this trick. More or less, just kind of watch what I do. So I'm going to wait till I build up a lot of speed on here. Touch the, the side of the slide barely and just kind of pull to the right and get this area. But yeah, once you do that, again, I have individualized tutorials for that. I don't want to spend too much time on it. You can go to my playlist and watch the other videos I have on it if you're still having trouble with it. But yeah, now we're going to fight Prawn. Go to this exact area on the on the tiles and you should be invincible if you just keep walking forward again if you didn't see where i walked to just restart this area and just watch watch where i walk to on these tiles because i'm in a very specific spot right now when his little rings go down that's when you want to bowl into him so wait for him to start his cycle again just gonna do this And when that goes down, you can just bowl again. See how he's down. There you go. So you should appear here if you're on the Xbox or PS2 version. If you're on GameCube, you want to mash out quickly and pull away from this because if you don't, you're going to get stuck inside of this thing. If that happens, it's not a big, it's not a big deal if that happens. Just pause and reload to defeat Prawn if you're on GameCube and you miss that. But yeah, it's... A lot easier on Xbox and PS2. Now, when you enter this area, you're gonna. Oh, I'm quick. Security tunnel is one of the harder tricks for people to learn in this run. Starting off, I'd say, I recommend just practicing a lot. Pay attention to where I jump, and also turn up the brightness on your TV so you can see where you're jumping. Just get rid of these guys first. You don't want to deal with them when you're learning this. See this little indent in the ground here? Kind of use it as a pointer to show where to go. If you can see, if you look straight forward, see the little yellow flowers, little tan brownish flowers over there? You're going to want to jump straight to those and practice your jump spacing. So you get to here, you can just jump up here. You land on top of here. Now you're going to bash into this. Land on top of the little tiny bulb. See this little bulb thing up here that I'm landing on? That's where you want to jump on. So I'm going to do it again in one go. Pay attention to the little bulb thing that I'm landing on. Alright, I don't even know how I just missed that just now. But I guess that'll happen if you don't get your, um, your good jump spacing in. feels weird doing this a different way than I'm used to with the chuck hit but yeah if, if you're doing it that way you're gonna wait for it to come back this way land on the bulb should be good this button is a pain in the ass sometimes just stand far away from it around these rocks and charge up your bubble bowl completely and you should get it So we're not going to be doing the rolling ballroom in this tutorial. It's a pretty outdated strat, but if you're having trouble with tower climb, you can just probably learn this instead. If you know how to do it casually, you can just do this ballroom, and if there's a spatula so far in the run that you had difficulty getting, you can replace it with this. I don't really think the rolling ballroom requires much of a tutorial. It's pretty casual.
He should have 31 spatulas and 14 socks now. Now we're just gonna warp back to on top of Shady Shoals and split. Oh, I'm quick. In this tutorial, we're gonna cover two sand mountain slides because I believe they're the most effective ways for like, the most effective spatulas to learn the game with. Because there are a lot of hard ones people have trouble learning when they're just starting out with this game. But as soon as you learn new spatulas, you're gonna to wanna to replace the uh, the Flounder Hill socks, the, excuse me, the Flounder Hill spatulas. You're gonna to wanna to replace them as soon as you learn newer strats. Sand. I think they're good for learning the game though. I realized. <clears throat> but yeah, once you get like a sub 130, you're gonna to wanna to get rid of them, probably. Yeah, you can just get that little stack over there to get some extra shiny objects. Oh, I'm quick! Honestly, I'd probably hold on to Flounder Hill until you get a sub 120. Which will take some runs to get. You're not gonna get it right away, trust me. Most people's first runs are around like two hours. So on Xbox, this guy's gonna fire at you early, so you have nothing to worry about, but on GameCube and PS2, the Chuck spawns in later. So you just gotta be careful not to, you know, let him hit you. The Chuck. Make sure you pay attention to the, the objects I'm hitting here. I'm hitting all these Thunder Tiki's so I can grind shiny objects for the next slope. You need 1500 to get into the next slope, so make sure you just be mindful of that. And don't forget this sock over here. key in this run to get all the shiny objects you can that don't cost you a lot of time. As many as possible. See that little stack over there? I'm just gonna wanna bowl that. Give yourself some extra shiny objects. Oh, I'm quick! Here. Oh, excuse me. Did I split earlier? Okay, so, my bad. Um, when you're entering this, you're not going to want to split until you exit. Don't, don't split where I split earlier. That was, that was autopilot for my runs. When you finish Mrs. Puff's thing and you, you bowl that stack, you should have, you should be on this split and you should have 34 spatulas and 18 socks and you're going to split. Oh, I'm thing. quick. All right. All right. So now you're just going to go over to Flounder Hill now. Again, this is a very similar slide, but you're gonna want to pay attention to the things that hit on this slide too. I'm gonna hit a bunch of things to get some shiny objects. Shush tiki's the little pale tiki's that disappear when you get close to them. If you don't hold your analog stick on a slide, like see how like right now I'm hands free for that. Make sure you hit these guys by the way. If you don't hold a direction on the slide, you can hit them. So you can use them to get some extra shiny objects if you need them. Get hit by this thing. Give yourself some shinies from that. Get hit by this thing too. You can get these on the side for a little combo. Make sure you get these guys if you can. a pretty good combo right here. Yeah, but you just don't want to die. Make sure that you don't die <laughs> from getting hit too much. But you do want to get as many robots as possible while you're going down this slope. I don't know how I just missed that one. 
But yeah, you want to leave here with 1500. So we have like 1400 right now. Should have 1500 by the time we get out of here. You want to get the sock up on top of this thing. Get that sock. If you missed that sock, um, there, there are some backups you can get later. Show them to you. for shiny objects we're doing all right all right this should give us 36 yeah okay now we're just gonna leave here So we have 19 socks now. Make sure you get the sock under here. That should give you 20. Switch to Sandy. Make sure when you switch to Sandy, you're standing on top of this platform, though. Because if you're standing off to the side, or like over here, there's a chance you'll soft block on this bus stop. Just be careful of that. If you have trouble with that jump, you can just grab ledge. Not a big deal. Doesn't lose much time. Drop to the ground, touch these tiki's. All right, that was dumb. I shouldn't have gotten stuck there. But you can just wait for this guy. Don't get hit by him. Just kind of go over the spatula and drop below it. Grab it. And you should be at 38 and 20. Now we're going to warp to Patrick. Oh, Split. I'm quick. And again, I wouldn't worry. After you trade these socks, you'll have 40. I wouldn't worry about the Strats and Industrial Park right now. I'll explain the necessary things. Phase 2 is really the only one you got to worry about right now. Warp to Shady Shoals after you do that. Phase 2 is the only thing that requires explanation, I'd say. Yeah, well, you'll, you'll, excuse me, that was, that was my bad. I'm used to spawning in from the other side. But yeah, when you, when you appear here, you should just go straight to Industrial Park. Phase one isn't going to require any strats. It's just really simple. Don't get hit. Just wait for him to finish spinning. Great barrier reef. That's the ticket. If you stand on this platform, he's less likely to hit you because it's farther away from his goo range than the rest of the area. I usually just stand here because it's hard to get hit. The robot better change tactics and fast. Stand on top of this thing if you don't want to get hit. It's a pretty safe spot. But yeah, pulling these little Texas swingers makes the boxes drop. 
And you're going to need those later. When you hit him, just kind of stand over here. Let his vomit cycle hit you, otherwise you'll lose a lot of time. By letting him hit you, it, yeah, you take damage, and yeah, he does the taunt thing, but it's still faster than having him vomit all the way around the stage like you would normally do. You can just kind of do this to stay above the stage. If not, you can just kind of go off to the side again. Wait for him to finish. Grab one of these things. Box should fall. Okay, you can just stand here. Just don't get hit. All you have to do is just not get hit in this fight and you'll save a lot of time. <laughs> Trust me. Do that, a box will drop. Same thing here, just kind of stand here, let him hit you. You can kind of do like a, an easier manipulation strat if you just kind of stand here when he spins. Don't worry too much about the manipulations though. They're pretty advanced. Yeah, what you want to do is get him to land in front of you like that. Yeah, don't worry about the manipulations. Just kind of stand off to the side, don't let him hit you. This just gonna oh, split, and then you can go to on top of Shady Shoals. If you're on Xbox, you do that. If not, it's faster just to walk across like this. But yeah, you just if you're on Xbox, you just want to walk over here. I mean, just you if you're on Xbox, you want to warp here. So now we're gonna go over cruise boosting, so I'm just gonna put my cam, add a cam down here. Welcome to the dark depths of Rock Bottom, home of strange creatures and souvenir t-shirts. Can you guys see this kind of well? Alright, cruise boosting is probably going to be what you spend the most time on learning this game. Just go to the back of this candy machine, start by pressing forward. You'll notice that if you walk forward with the analog completely facing forward, you'll see how Spongebob kind of just slides to the left a little bit or slides to the right. For now, we're just gonna teach you one way so it's not confusing. Walk into the candy machine until he slides to the left like this. And then when you do that, you wanna press the bubble ball and cruise bubble button on the same frame. It should be noted that on GameCube, cruise bubble is triggered by using the analog part of the GameCube controller and not the digital part. So, for this, it uses this part, not the little, the click at the bottom. Cruise, cruise bubble is this part on the game controller, the little top springy part. 
But on Xbox and PS2, it's digital, so you're fine. <clears throat> All right. Once you do that on the first frame, it, see, once you do the, the bubble ball and cruise bubble on the same frame, you should get like this kind of an effect here where you can moonwalk. Uh, so what you want to do now is do that once. And then once you notice that you're, you had the first part, you want to just pull to the right like that. Sorry. Yeah, you want to pull to the right, but you don't want to pull like down in this direction. You want to pull more to the side. See that? And every time you miss it, you can just keep go keep going until you get it. Like you'll notice here, like, see how I'm not getting it? When I get it, you'll start hearing the ticking noise. And now I'll just hold to the right and I'll do it again. If I miss it, see like that, it's fine. You can just bowl to get rid of it. Start over again. See how I'm missing it here? You can tell that I'm missing it because I'm not sliding when I do it. Whereas here, like, you saw a little bit of a, a momentum shift in that. It's kind of hard to explain how to, how cruise boosting, you, you tell when you get it. Just know that the more you do it, the, the better you'll get it telling when you have it. But once you do have it, you should have this kind of an effect here where you can pull back and you won't be able to move. So I'll, I'll do that again. Reel the level, I'll show you. So you're, you're gonna enter rock bottom and go to the back here. See that? Show you again. Just like that. Now, cruise boosting movement is a bit different than any other game you ever played. <laughs> First off, uh, I'm. My hands are not in the controller right now. I'm just moving. So, note that with cru when you have a cruise boost active, you can just not press any buttons and you'll still move. But when you push forward, you'll go into like a sprinting mode. And because you're constantly moving without touching anything, you can just use these buttons, the bash. The, um, the bounce to kind of string moves together. See how that works? You can use them to get on top of objects you wouldn't normally be able to get on top of. I just got camera locked. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> All right, well, slow cruise boosting. Yeah, if you get a um, if you get a bad one, it might look something like this. See how I'm not moving as fast? It's kind of hard to tell, but I can I can moonwalk with this cruise boost, so you can tell that it's not at max speed. Whereas if I do this. max speed yeah but again if you're having trouble with cruise boosting I have so many tutorials on this just go to my playlist and you'll see like a bunch of different options for learning it it's not hard once you get used to it don't let a uh, frame perfect scare you it's not too bad anyway once you get your cruise boost you're gonna want to go over here grab this artwork and um, Press A on the sign just so it doesn't like knock you off. Sometimes if you press B, what'll happen is the text box will go away and you'll you'll press B here and you'll lose your cruise boost. So we're we're gonna start over. Show you this.
get the artwork, press A here, go straight across, get the text box from Bubble Buddy. See how I'm stringing moves together here? My inputs here are uh, Y, Y, and then B. And you're just gonna wanna turn, grab this spatula here. Once you get that spatula, you're just gonna wanna pause the game, warp to swing along spatula. So you're gonna glide over here, get the sock in here. I'm just kind of glide across this. You might get hit by the chuck. If you get hit by the chuck and get knocked down, you can like kind of jump up this way and activate the box. So you can do that and then just jump in the box here and you'll appear back up here. Museum is typically kind of difficult for beginners. Take your time on this, just kind of climb up here. Just stand on this little pole. You might want to get the checkpoint too, just in case. Now you're watching for this tire in front of me here. Wait for it to go through the laser wall right now. You waited for it to go through the laser wall. And if you do that and jump right when it goes through, you should get on this. Go to where all these red shiny objects are so you get a, the checkpoint in case you fall again. That was really stupid. I didn't mean to do that. Um, right, let's forget, forget that just happened. Let's go back to the checkpoint. So, I'm used to having a cruise boost here because I do this with Spongebob instead. As Sandy, you're going to want to touch this one as you go off so you don't get blown up. Now, you're just going to wait for this tire. Just kind of glide into it. Let yourself hover over there and you should get it pretty easily. If you're having trouble with that, just watch it again. No big deal. But yeah, after you get the spatula, make sure you get the artwork down here. Otherwise, you have to redo the entire museum. Make sure you get this. And if you fall, if you miss the tire up there, you can just grab this before dying and then reload. If you happen to die, if you, if you happen to fall in the museum and get checkpointed and you can't get back up, then you have to pause the game and, and warp back the swing along spatula and go back to the museum of Sandy, unfortunately. But yeah, once you get that artwork, you can just warp back to get to the museum. You should have 44 spatulas and two socks. Oh, I'm quick! Alright, so once you get here, walk over to where these tiki's are. Use your cruise bubble, and you should be able to hit this button on the ground by Mr. Krabs. Alright, now that you've done that, you're gonna walk over to this rock. Get a cruise boost. Jump off the side here. If you fall here, you can sometimes just barely land on this thing. You can just do a little bash or a double jump to get up. Get the sock. Once you got that, you should have 45 spatulas and four socks, yep. Now we're just gonna go to um, slip sliding away. Oh, I'm quick! Split. All right, now we're just gonna go to Trench Advanced Darkness.
Now you're going to warp to Trench of Advanced Darkness here. Alright, so the strats I'm going to teach in this level. Let's see, we have 49 and 6, don't we? Alright. So I'm going to teach some slightly different strats here that I'm used to teaching. You're going to cruise boost over here. Excuse me, hold on. Okay, yeah, so never mind. All right, so start over. When you get to the Trench of Advanced Darkness, you're going to want to do this. Fuck, I, I forgot it again. All right. When you get here, first thing you want to do is turn around and do this cruise bubble and hit the little tiki up here. Jump up on here, get a cruise boost. Make sure you get the artwork over there. Jump down, get the sock. And you want a double jump spin to go between this little pipe here. To set up for this trick, you're just gonna wanna get stuck here, kind of. And when you jump on this platform, just kinda go back and forth like this. If you do that, you should get this jump. Make sure you're jumping as the, um, as the platform is rising so you get a boost up. If you jump while it's rising, you get more jump height. But now, now you're going to want to just jump across. You can walk over here. Switch to Sandy. Now we're just going to do lasers. Make sure you get this sock down here. You can also do this as Spongebob, but I found that for beginners, this is kind of difficult to do as Spongebob. It's not really that much slower though. For beginners, at least, it's not that much slower. So once you hit this, you're gonna get this cutscene. Again, a lot of this stuff can be done with cruise boosting, but you can add that as you get better at the game and implement more strats into your run. So I'd say like one of the best things to work on once you get your first run done is probably to start learning how to do this with SpongeBob. Which was, which is like, you can find videos on that for sure. So once you hit that, once you hit that button, you're gonna just pause and go to lasers are fun and good for you. All right, so now you can just grab the spatula. And again, a lot of people forget to do this. Pause the game here, go to return the museum's art and trade in the artwork. A lot of people forget to turn in the artwork here and you should, Remember to do that. Okay, when we leave here, we're gonna have 49 spatulas and six socks. Now we're gonna go to Goodle Lagoon, King of the Castle. Oh, Split. I'm quick! All right, now we have to get uh, the moat spatula and yeah, early towers. Okay, Not early, early towers. Okay, never mind. Forgot I said that. Just hit this invisible button with the cruise bubble. Get a cruise boost on the inside of the sand castle. You 
You can jump up like this and get this um this tiki stack over here. Did I did I hiss I missed the button. Huh. I didn't realize I missed it. I, I just realized something. Um I'm gonna actually change this in my tutorial. So well, let's let's back it up for a second. Yeah, you know, actually that's that's fine, I guess. Yeah, alright, so I was gonna teach you guys how to grind. But it's I don't know. Probably would have been a better option anyway. Realized that I should have probably done that. Yeah, get this thing on top here. If you hit the button, it should allow you to just do that. Yeah, just jump in the box there once you drown. Once you hit this guy on GameCube and PS2, you're going to walk up to Larry. But if you're on Xbox, you should have the warp to connect the towers. It's faster to warp than walk on Xbox. But yeah, if you have trouble with any of the... Um, I'll, I'll show you a backup spatula later if you have trouble with any of this stuff. Once you do that, you're going to warp to Ooh, the scene you come back with a cruise bubble. Get the cruise ball behind this button, pull the trigger when you hit when you go behind the button there. When the but when the cruise double goes behind that box, just pull the trigger and it should detonate itself and you should be able to grab this. Did you do that, pause, go to Patrick. Oh, Spoiler. I'm quick! Alright, so here. Get a cruise boost off of this wall. Jump in the box. Oh, excuse me. Um, guess we don't have the box unlocked yet. All right, so we're just gonna go down here. Get the sock. Get the sock up here too. Go around this way, because you'll you'll see it if you mess it up. There's a cutscene trigger like right over here. If you hit it, you just have to get another cruise boost. Not a big deal. But yeah, you're just gonna jump up here, talk to Patrick. Up. Oh, excuse me. Are you are you for real? <laughs> Come on. All right. I'm teaching it this way because I find it a lot easier to make this jump than the other jumps. Switch to SpongeBob here, and you're gonna get a cruise boost off this little ledge here. you do a double jump, spin, slam, you should be able to make it pretty easily. Now you just gotta run under the map to cross this area over here. That jump is kind of hard to get. I shouldn't have showed it to you that way. I should have showed it to you the other way. It's easier for beginners. I'll, I'm just gonna redo that. Show you guys the better way of doing it. Sorry about that.
So again, you just run under here. Be careful not to drown here. Get rid of your cruise boost when you end up here. You're gonna jump for this little platform here. It's really easy, just grab the ledge like that. Now you can just kind of walk up. You can actually hit this button with a cruise bubble. It's pretty stupid. You can just go over here and grab this. Quick! I guess we um we already did this. Oh, so I'm just gonna... there, SpongeBob. Squidward tells me you're looking. I guess you would just split on getting the spatula and dilemma, and then we just. Oh, I'm skip quick. That again. I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna edit these splits. Don't don't worry about this split. I'm just gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna delete that once I make the new splits. So I'm just gonna skip oh, that. Oh, I'm quick. Yeah, so you're gonna wanna jump down here. Get a cruise boost here. You can jump up like that. It's an option for you. Another way you can do it is going across here, jump to the side, jump on this. This is all pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not really gonna go over it. Just much detail. If you're on GameCube or PS2, you can get up and walk this way. It's faster to walk. Make sure you talk to Mrs. Puff, or otherwise you'll soft lock the game. And you can switch here to change the SpongeBob and get your cruise boost. But if you're on Xbox after you get the spatula there, you're gonna warp to drain the lake instead. Oh, I'm quick! should appear here get a cruise boost over here this is all pretty basic platforming pretty easy Get rid of your cruise boost here. Get rid of this guy just so you don't get hit by him. You gotta be really careful of these guys just not to get hit. It's important that you don't. It's very hard to get back up if you do. point we have nine socks and a lot of shiny objects from all the mistakes I made in this Ow. 
just pause and warp to top of the hill. Talk to Squidward. Get your spatula. Once you know how to cruise boost, the rest of this run is very self-explanatory. Oh, I'm quick! Just go to the chum bucket. After that, make sure you split. Cruise boost here. <clears throat> now we're just gonna skip the entire kelp forest. All you have to do is jump on this leaf, enter the back like this. Sometimes I see people have trouble on kelp vines. There are a bunch of ways of doing this that are pretty easy. The, the easiest method I think is just cruise boosting here. Jumping in the box, accept the time challenge. Now you're gonna set it up to jump on this little, um... Yeah, just jump on this board of wood, boost over, touch the trigger, turn, and do this. If you have trouble with that method, you can just do it this way, though. The rest of this level is very easy. Just walking. Go to the kelp caves after you get that spatula. Hey, kid. There's a sock up there if you need it, by the way. If you need this backup sock, you can just jump up here like, like this, yeah. Just get that sock like that. Another version difference here, if you're on GameCube or PS2, you're gonna just wanna you're gonna wanna drown here. GameCube and PS2, it's faster to drown here and walk across to the destination I'm going to. And you'll see, like I'll I'll walk this way and go up there. But if you're on Xbox, after you get the spatula down there, you're gonna wanna warp to the Tiki Roundup. Alright, so now that you did this, you're going to pause, scroll down to across the dreamscape. Yeah, you should have 64 socks and not, excuse me, 64 spatulas and 9 socks. Oh, I'm Split. quick! Now, all you're going to do here is get a cruise boost off of this box. Before you do that, I recommend you just kill this jellyfish so he doesn't, yeah, attack you like that. This is pretty easy. Once you do this, just, you're gonna wanna, again, like right here, hold A, boost off the box, and just slam. Now, jump on top of this wheel, double jump, spin, slam. Now you're just gonna get this. If you don't get hit by that thing, just bowl to get rid of your cruise boost so you don't fall off and die. You'll figure that out on your own, really. But yeah, we're just gonna jump across here. Sixty-six and nine, looking good. Now we're gonna warp to Mr. Krabs. Oh, I'm quick. Split. 
Now here we're gonna talk to crabs and trade on a spatula. So that Create some shiny objects for a spatula. Walk all on the back of the crusty crab to get this sock back here. Should give you 10 socks. Now you're good to go. Now we're just going to finish off with graveyard and then chum bucket. The grave. I found that most people have difficulty cruise boosting there, so I'm just going to cruise boost over here instead. Off this wall here. Wait for this guy to shoot. Should be able to jump on this thing, do a double jump, slam here, spin, do a cruise bubble. You have to spin to make that cruise bubble work, by the way. You have to spin. So you'll see like he's not gonna do it here. Like he, he actually will. Alright, never mind. Well, spinning spinning makes it more consistent, I guess. Once you do that, wait for this guy to fire his missile. Let me just jump over here. Make sure that when you do this, your camera is turned to face this way. So you don't fall off and, and drown in the, the goo. Now when you do this jump, I want you to face forward this way. Facing the trampoline and just mash L and you'll clip through and you'll get it like this. You can just jump straight across this gravestone. If you're afraid of this guy, you can just kind of stand here and wait for him to throw. Not a big deal. If you're on GameCube, it might be kind of hard to see. Like GameCube and PS2 have hard lighting, like really bad lighting. But you're jumping on this little object here to get across. And I just get rid of this here because there's a graphic glitch sometimes or if you have a bad angle, you get stuck in the wall and you lose vision. So I just get rid of that there and just walk across. Oh, I'm quick. I'd right, split there. Here you're just going to jump, land on the spatula. If you miss the spatula, you can just go under it and press the Y button or triangle button to touch it like that. But once you grab it, you want to pause and go to Shipwreck Bungee. Wall jumps are pretty casual, so I'm not going to go into detail with this. Just know that, especially over here, you don't want to move your analog stick when you touch this. Jump, go for this first and just press A. See, I have my hand. I'm not even touching the analog stick. Just tap A when you touch the board. But you want to start with this board. I prefer starting with the board because it shows you where you have to jump to meet the next board. But yeah, I'm just pressing A. I'm not even... I'm not even holding down the, the analog stick anywhere. This might be one of the harder levels for you to learn Ooh, I'm in quick. the speed run because the platforming is kind of hard with the cruise boosting. If you can't do this with SpongeBob, just do it with Sandy. But I'll show you how to get up there. Get a cruise boost off of this area over here. If you can't get that cruise boost, what you can do is just um, first get rid of this guy. If you have trouble with that one, you can just do it over here instead. No big deal. When you get that, just run over here, spin this, jump up here. If you have trouble with this part, you can just switch to Sandy. But if you can, jump up these platforms with cruise boosting. Hit this button. Hit this button now. Now you can hit this button. To unlock the Dutchman fight, you gotta hit this button over here in the chest. You'll unlock it in the menu so you can just warp to it later. Wow, this is a really fast tutorial. Anyway, I realized halfway through this that that lasers is something you don't really have to do anymore. 
because there's a faster spatula that you can do instead of lasers. So I'll go over that after this is over, which it will be soon. Now we're gonna go, um, I do teach Dutchman skip in this, okay. Oh, I'm quick. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll teach you the back, forget what I said about lasers. For any spatula you have trouble with in late game, I'll show you a way to replace it. That's how I'm gonna do this. All right, so just switch to SpongeBob here. You wanna get your cruise boost over by this plank of wood. Like that. Now this trick is kind of hard for new people sometimes. What you wanna do is line it up so you land up here and just slam like that. So when you, when you go on top of this thing, you wanna just pull to the right and you should land up like this. I think of how you could possibly mess this up. A lot of people will do this. They'll miss it. If you fall, by the way, you can just go around like this, around the back. But you wanna keep doing this until you eventually push up into the right, slam, you should get it. And you're gonna climb this area here. Face this little wood ship in front of me right now. You're gonna wanna stand right here. And you're gonna do a little tap jump and mash Y and you should get up every time. So I'll show you again. Get stuck here, turn yourself. Get stuck like this. Do a tiny little tap and mash Y or triangle, whatever you use to get up there. And you should be able to get up. Again. Slam. Should get up. You can just do a little a little boost to get over that. Now, this part is pretty simple. All I have to do, look at this little smokestack that's in my vision here. You're gonna wanna jump to the left of that. So just jump, spin, and you should get it every time. If this is too hard for you, you can just fight the Dutchman, which takes a really fucking long time. If you don't wanna fight the Dutchman, I'll show you a replacement spatula later, after the tutorial's over. So now I'm gonna pause the game, scroll down to Patrick and split. Whoa, you should have I'm 74 quick. and 10. And now all you have to do is just trade in your 10 socks. And you're gonna warp back to the chum bucket now. They serve food here, yes, but they don't serve love. All right, so for this part, I encourage you to pay attention because a lot of people feel like this is really easy and they mess it up in, in a run when they do it. So as soon as you get into this boss fight, just mash A to get rid of the cutscene and then mash your um, your cruise bubble button. And aim for his bottom half for the second hit. Now for Robo Sponge Skip, the trigger, much like Dutchman fight, there's an invisible there's an invisible trigger above you. So you're trying to launch yourself into the invisible trigger, which requires some practice just to get used to launching off this pad. But what you're trying to do is get launched up when the guy smacks the left side of the pad. So I'm gonna stand on this side to bait him to hit this side of the pad. And then I'm gonna get him to launch me up. I'll go over that again. What I'm doing is waiting for him to hit the pad, and when I see that the pad is launching up, again, you're gonna have your own visual cue for this. You're gonna figure it out on your own how to, how to do this fight, but what I personally do is just stand like right here on this side, and then I push, I push forward as he's hitting. So as the pad launches up, I walk off to the side and jump, and it launches me up. Now, if you miss it like that, it's not a big deal. All you have to do, again, it's only, the trigger is only over that one platform. So make sure that if you do this, um, you can just jump on this trampoline and skip this platform. Go back to this one. I have an individualized tutorial on this in my playlist, you can check it out. But ultimately, this trick requires a lot of muscle memory and feel-based practice, so I recommend you just practice it. That's all I have to really say. 
If you have any specific questions about any of the stuff I covered in this, just be sure to mention it in the comment section. Okay, maybe just a little. You, you guys know how it is. The rest of this is pretty simple. Nah, it's still the thing about the cutscene skip is like on GameCube and PS2, it doesn't matter if you mash it because it's so slow. But for Xbox, you want to wait until either you hear vibration on the final fight, like when you when you when you enter this area after you you beat the Robo Sponge, just wait a little bit to press A until you feel vibration happen, so you know that you touch the ground. But it's honestly I wasn't gonna cover that because it's like it's kind of advanced. And people will kind of figure that out on their own as they play. There you go. Yeah, I'll put the Discord for this game so people can ask questions. I'll put that in the description. Yeah, when you skip that area of the fight, Plankton doesn't... Plankton just kind of gets deactivated. He won't show up. Alright, so now that I showed you guys that stuff, I'm going to go over... Uh, the alternate thing that I was thinking about in Gulagoon. If you don't want to do lasers or if you don't want to do Dutchman skip, you have other options. So you remember this part of the run where we warped the King of the Castle? So we got the cruise bubble off here. Cruise boost. So what you can do is go up here, touch this thing, this little board, this little pale board of wood, and then you get the spatula that you normally get down here. So when you do that, you drown and you end up here. So now what you can do is grind for an extra 3,500 shiny objects by doing this. You do that, you jump off here. And then you just keep doing it. Keep doing it until you have enough. This gives you around 500 each time you do it. So you can just jump off the bridge. So in that case, you should do this like seven times. Count out seven of these and you should have enough. And then once you have seven done, you just go on and go to... Um, you, you just move on. I guess warp to... King of the castle. Turn around, jump in the box, and then you would do this thing where you, you hit the um, you hit the robot over here. And you talk to Larry and move on. But yeah, but once you after you do that, you go through like watch the splits, you go through all this stuff, jellyfish fields, kelp forest, dream two. In graveyard, before you go into the Dutchman's graveyard. You're going to want to trade for two spatulas instead of one. So you trade for two. Before you go in, you trade for two. The reason why you do it seven times and it gives you 500 each is because you want to get this one, which you are, you can already afford, and you add this one onto it, 3,500. So you can do that if you don't want to do Dutchman Skip or if you don't want to do lasers or any spatula after Industrial Park, really, you can replace that with pretty simple anyway hopefully this made this game a lot easier to learn that was my goal for making this make it a lot more accessible I'm gonna publish this today make sure you join the speedrunning discord for this game I'm gonna leave it in the description I'm gonna upload the splits I, there are only two changes I had to make on this I'm gonna get rid of the dilemma split and I'm gonna get rid of the um, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna change the number of spatulas for this one. But that's all I have to change. This will be up later. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And make sure you stop by my stream to ask questions if you have any. All right, I'm actually gonna go get breakfast now, but I'll be back later to do more runs. See you later, guys. Have fun.